vibes when he does actually grow into that uh in the end we're hearing the match should start soon which is what i like to hear yeah uh, we've we have heard that a lot though and then we and then we'll waffle for another five minutes and we're like eh. You know, we, we, we can't always get the guy. I, mean, I don't really mind as long as. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> as oh, long as Catch uh, comes. It's coming. It is it's coming. happening. Here we go. Grand final. Winner takes. Well, if it's Tyler, not a very long flight, but a flight nonetheless to Chengdu. IM tournament. One game to go. The Mongols, of course, winning last time. They're in hot form. David against Goliath. And uh, the Davids in Tyloo, they're starting on the T side. Yep, their map pick in the series. Our first in the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu qualifiers for the Asia region. Tyloo having two swings at it because of the China-specific slot. We'll see if they can make good on it or whether Mongols will take that secondary position. Already a very fast-paced pistol in from Tyloo. Once again, trying to threaten hell control. We've seen a lot of this on gun rounds, but look how quickly the Mongols are dispatching of this. Kaze playing up close, but... Unfortunately, can't get much more done. Mazzino there to cover his teammate as they took that fight. So, a 2 on 4 now. Tyloo having access with that bomb towards lower. And actually, Kaze getting the jumping dink onto Blitz and forcing him away. So, running out a little bit dry on information here because they don't know if both players on Tyloo are committed towards that lower side or not. That'd be very audible on the rotate. Ah, critical kill missed by Oman. So, Kaze's left alone. That was the key jewel, wasn't it? because Blitz was a lone lower now. You really want to get bomb plants at a minimum out of these pistol rounds at the T-side. It's, it's actually not a bad result. Keep the force you can take. But here, not to be four alive for the Mongols. No plant found for Tai Lu. So a good start. Seen plenty of Tai Lu so far in this qualifier on nuke um i do think their play style actually changed a little bit for the yeah. earlier series it felt more pacey to me the first series they played very slow especially on the t side unbelievably slow just the very standard set counter strike i do think in the series earlier they were unleashing mercury a little bit on outer they're giving him space to play with and it was uh, it was a more uh, vibrant brand of counter strike i was watching yeah, I think definitely learning some lessons as they've played more of this map in the qualifier. Always have the temper expectations as well. The, some of the teams they're playing in the extremes land aren't really fully fledged teams, or some of them, you know, they're not really active in the circuit. Like, we've got a full Korean team, and I don't think I've seen a Korean team compete in God knows how long. The police also, might be there. Yeah, <laughs> also, the police might be there. <laughs> yeah, they might have played the police, they're not really sure. It's all very confusing. Yeah. I, think that I, I couldn't make sense of whether that was just what they called the qualifier for it, and then it was just a completely different team. So, yeah. Maybe local law enforcement getting involved. Okay, guns out. Enough waffling. Bit of a bonus round. Two MP9s. Spam ass on Mazzinio. Uh, 910 has got the AWP out. I think that's because he uh, went pistol only. Previous. So that big green will come in handy, especially if Tyloo don't expect it. But maybe these MP9s, there's the scope for aggression here, maybe towards the lobby later on. 910, look at this. Out early towards red. There's nobody up on silo to greet him. Mercury's the only player nearby. And let's see if 910 chooses to get even more aggressive for now. Tries to uh, stake his claim to the red crate. Yeah, I think Mercury's in trouble here. If he pads round to the red crate, yeah, 910 just so ready for that fight. Took a wide angle, and Mercury's just not prepared. Kaze does find a counter, though. Senzu trying to get a little bit antsy in towards Hut, and Mazzino pressured in at ramp, taking a lot of damage for that duel. And all the Mongols players are taking a brunt of damage. So low on all these fights. Nate is great onto Allman and funnels him into Mazzino, who rotated away from ramp. So they've got a mad advantage, but they're walking wounded. There's a lot going on here in towards door of course now trade is there for jam young it might be a two on three but the cts have to stay spread two players are low and i hope for their sake that nine is looking the right way at the right time blitz peels off gets back in tow that was awkward at least nine tens on location mazzino yes they're just in time so a clean up in the end very hectic round but I think the Mongols would take that. They weren't on the best weaponry. 
Um, and they've even scooped up an AK to boot. Something to note as well is, you know, kind of highlight Senzu's age as a reason to sort of fixate on him. You know, definitely a, an aggressive type of rifler of, of young age, but Mazzino, kind of the opposite, but still young, 16 years old, and making a lot of very good decisions based on what was happening in that round. You know, a lot of players were low, and, you know, he didn't want to concede ramp control, but had to do so in the end, and found some great timings because of it. That's the Mongols' evolution. Every roster move they make, the, the replacements are somehow just younger and younger. It's got to stop at some point. I believe uh -oh. 16 is the limit. Um, yeah. I think... Yeah. Why I'm saying ESL and last. Um, that's all good exchange. Hmm. Bit of space here. Benzu's nearby. Um, if you not plant, that'd be really nice, but actually, it's not going to be the case. So, bomb is planted. Some rifles are retrieved. This was a uh, non investment, essentially, from Tyloo. Just a couple pistols. Anything from here is just a bonus. As Kaze seeks out a jewel. Foreman fights into his decon. Not going to work out for him. That bomb behind, behind the silo. This should be out of reach. But even so, two kills, bomb plant. That's a lot of money. Uh, not a bad day out to Kylo. Yeah, all in all, got their initial objective accomplished. Some damage, some extra money. Yeah, uh, they'll happily take that. Aside from the initial attempt to hold the site, which wasn't the prettiest from the Mongols, the retake, very smooth. I feel like comms cleared up very rapidly understood exactly the pace they wanted to come back into that site with. Because that was still technically winnable for Tyloo, but hey, they'll they'll take what they can get. 4-0 start, and Tyloo reinvesting, having the AWP out on Kaze as well, who had a great game on Nuke previously against the Huns. They got down to business. Olman, opening kill, in fact, and not really sure where that's taken place. Seems like a bit of aggression over towards ramp. 9-10 will find a kill back onto Ormond, so a trade enabled. Techno taking up a little bit more of that space, but hmm. Tyler have got outside and a path to secret. Lola Mazzino got aggressive through the ramp smoke. Maybe on a flash, we're not quite sure. The here and now, though. Secret gained. Advent lurking. Mercury, of course, the point man. Problem is, first opponent is an AWP. They might know it as they're being very clinical through these angles. A flashbang with them, a lot of good as they swing onto this decon line. What are they waiting for? It looks like Advent's doing a little bit of a ruse. Nades on upper, but 910 is not moving. And Jam Young, oh, he's a lucky boy to be alive. 910 backs off. Calls for a rotate. Techno needs to get down ramp to help out his teammate because right now 910 is surrounded. Repeat nades going on to that ramp position. And 910 surely in trouble. He tucks himself oh. backside. Two found, one above. Make it free. Surely not. Trade is there in the end. Bomb needs to be retrieved. Advent is way off. This is not an easy plan for Kaze. Where has this come from today? He's been a beast late round. Oh, I mean, the, the, the audacity as well. I mean, jumping straight into that line for 9-10. A, a couple of missed shots, but then just lightning quick to, to pick up Secret. Understood what Advent was up to as well. And yeah, piecing it all together, but gets very scary. 9-10 has been really on form. You know, in the games that we've caught from him, he's just... He's hitting the shots he needs to. He's, he's playing his life very well. And you couldn't have asked for more in his position, really. Ooh, much more hasty out of Tai Lu. This time Mercury coming out from door. But outside occupied by Oman. Oh, uh, they don't clear from Mazzino, but they spot him. And so Jam Young there and prepared to cover for Oman. Jam Young as well will attack Hell. And he loves to go for this particular move. Kaze just continuing to punish. So trades on trades, and we're three on three for only a moment before Advent's Lurk finally bears fruit. 
Perfect. Totally unsighted. This is taking a turn now for the Mongols. 910 really need to hold on to this. Uh, they don't have lost bonus. They, they have putrid cash reserves. Jamio might catch head spotted. That was I think great timing. Hunt. I think literally. they should hunt this. Yeah. I think they should go for this. They have been burned for making... I, I want to say better decisions, but at the wrong tempo. So yeah, a little bit hesitant to pursue. Advent was the only one really... And I don't think anybody else will be close enough by to take this up out of his hands. So 9-10 will save. But Tai Lu breaking in with another successful round after Advent and Kaze pulled it together. Now it's Kaze and Jamyung that survive for a second. And now the Mongols have a choice to make. Do they think they can hold on to this ult for another round? And if not, do they buy round it? Yeah, conservative approach. Their buy is still so bad in the mix. It's just very few kits. Don't have any uh, opportunities in this round. I'm looking at 9-10, I think he was probably spotted there. So. Yeah, Jam Young saw enough. He looked yeah. at him for a moment and just said, no, I'm not dealing with that. I'm out of here. And now we're crossing in towards lower. It looks like Mongols is just going to commit to stanking, stacking ramp. Uh, you can't blame them, can you? Uh, given the buy. Well, you did say their buy was going to be putrid in the next round, so maybe they are stanking up this, the A bomb site. Hmm. Exactly. <laughs> well said. They need to save this orb, whatever happens. They can't buy another. Unless, uh, God forbid, they kill Kaze. Scoop that one up. Yeah, they've come to the assessment that, yeah, it is in fact the lower bomb site. That Molotov was very indicative of such. And Blitz will insert himself in. Actually has a teammate alongside him, I think underneath him. So, yeah, having Senzu alongside does bait for Blitz to get a free kill. It took a little longer than you would have anticipated, but they're doing some decent damage against the full buy of Tai Lu. The only one that didn't really commit all the way down was 910. He gets here late to the party, one on three. And they know exactly where he's positioned. Ullman just trying to play his life, not give him the opportunity to clutch this one back. And 910 will slither away into the sunset once again. But Tyloo breaking through and finding way more success than we saw in their previous outing versus the Mongols. I like what I'm seeing. Of course, this round wasn't much of an, uh, an investment, but... The previous two gun rounds. Yeah. It felt good. This, this is the type of round that Tyloo was losing yesterday, so... We take our minor victories, I suppose. They're also winning rounds without Mercury just running in and killing three players. Yeah. Terrorists win. More of a team effort. Lovely. Want this game to be competitive, the Mongols swept Tyloo under the rug in the upper bracket final. And already some pressure being applied by the Chinese. I do wonder whether or not we're going to see 910 ever play aggressively with his ult. It's not like he's, you know, he reacts slowly to those types of peaks. We saw Mazzino try and get aggressive to towards radio in a, in a round prior, but that could be something that they reinvestigate with that AWP in tow. This is the play they went for last time, and it wasn't successful, but losing players outside, 9-10 floored, Blitz actually spamming back. So Mercury is the one that falls for Ty Lu. They still got another player outer, and they may still collapse on this A bomb site. Oh, oh, big kill. That was beautiful. Senzu out. Techno fortunately is on the side, but he has so much work to do. First found. And they pump the brakes a little bit here of Tai Lu. Another rotation is in. It might be ill-advised to commit to this now. It's got a minute on the clock. There's no need to go all the way in. Techno finds another. Make it free. And it's just Advent. One on three. Surely not. 
One headshot found. And that was a great hold in the end. Good yeah. stuff. I mean, credit Techno there, really. I, I mean, as soon as they get all that space, Jagman gets to kill Top Hut. For Techno to have revealed himself, and then the decisions he made to sort of bridge into Tetris and get scrappy with the guy in front of door. You know, that, that really just created so much more room for those rotates to sail out from heaven. It's, I imagine, part of his justification for leaving the back of the bombsite. I've thoroughly enjoyed this game so far. It's been punchy. It's been aggressive. If the series stays like this, it is most certainly a tantalizing prospect. Jam Young. Going to open up the score sheet in this round. Yet again, another round of early engagements. Blitz, though. He's going to fall. And that could flummox these CT rotates. Nobody has actually dropped lower yet, so maybe a read from the Mongols? The bomb is lobby. It is the right decision. Um, I'm just not really sure how they know this. Well, they, they boosted up into Mustang, and I don't think they'll anticipate that one, so likely a free kill here for Senzu, but trade is always going to be lined up. Advent right behind him, and Advent on a bit of a heater. Nine and seven so far, and a triple kill for the in-game leader of Tai Lu. He's getting kills on lurks, he's getting trade kills, he's he's in edge shots. It's not like these are these are labored spray downs and it's getting all awkward and funky. Advent's Advent's right there with the best of them. Did Mercury and Advent change PCs? That would be a world. That would be a world. It's got to be said, we've, we've asked a lot of times in this qualifier, you know, what happens if Mercury isn't creating all that space? And... Not to say, you know, he's losing them rounds, but uh, it, we're looking at other players to open up. We're looking at, you know, strategically to find gains. And it's been pretty good so far. I mean, on the T side of Nuke, it's not an easy side to play. Yeah. And they lost Pistol as well. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Yeah. It's, uh... It's certainly a lot better than yesterday. The, the Tai Lu guys, you know, in the games that I've been able to catch with them before, you know, they'll often pick into Nuke, but they expect to start T-side, and that's where they actually do most of their best work, weirdly, against Asian teams. It was actually the CT sides that really struggled. So, you know, but they, you imagine the surprise they had getting Nuke picked into them when they played the Huns in the lower bracket final, with, like the consolidation final. They were thinking, I mean, this is just extra repetitions. We need the the work to put in on that CT side, and they put in a shift. Yeah, good for you, Blitz. Get that one extra frag. Mongols need a pause. They need a discussion. It's not like they're a, a terrible nuke team. Not like this way down their pool and they don't know what they're doing or how to approach these rounds. Mm -hmm. There's the pause. Maybe that's the big difference between the Mongols and Tai Lu. When you ask the Mongols to pause, they do. And when you ask Tai Lu to do it, they don't. Translate be translates better into Mongolia than Mandarin. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. Somehow. Is it Mongolian? I guess is it. Is that yeah, no, the they they have they have their own language. Though I did learn that in their schools, at one point or another, the secondary language I believe was Russian. But now the secondary language, I think, in the past like twenty years, has shifted to English. So. Yeah. For a lot of the world, uh, fortunately for our employment status, <laughs> English tends to be quite quite accepted. Oh, yeah, I guess. For that one. <laughs> so yeah. good, something good came of it, alright. Not much else, let's be honest. Either way. Where are we at? These players need to stop facing above these smokes, man. The, what do you expect to happen? I'm not for happy. Him, for him to miss and me to kill him. It's probably wishful thinking, especially the game that Mercury's had thus far, typically, and has been, the, the highest performer for Tai Lu. And hell, 
kind of above everybody in this qualifier thus far, but off to a rocky start. The rest of the team has picked up the slack, but this is not one of those rounds. It's not looking likely. A lot of the rounds they've had so far have been pretty contingent on having that pressure outside and being able to salvage across, and they actually will be able to make that journey, but there's a lot of information relayed over to the Mongols, and so they've already inserted a player into the B-bomb site. Oh, that's awkward. Get the kill. Okay, he cancels the plan. That's exactly what Mazzino was hoping for. He knew his position was given up. But a headshot offering for Orman. This is a 1 versus 4 turned 3, but very difficult now for him. Nade will blow open that smoke, and Techno just has him as a sitting duck. Nice opener from the Mongols to chew through the personnel of Tai Lu. This is great fun. Back and forth. 9 10 blitz, they're having games. Maybe all they needed was that timeout. Come fresh out of it and straight into a round win. It's the one thing that you can't criticize Tyler for going into this series is they're definitely not rusty. They're definitely not <laughs> out of sorts when it comes to playing competitive Counter Strike today. Or over the last two days, to be honest. Credit to these teams. And, a long uh, day at the office. Yeah. I mean, it's not quite... A, I mean, in Europe, it happens. You really do have three best of three days, especially mm -hmm. online, with all the concurrent tournaments and the qualifiers. Uh, can imagine not quite as common in Asia. But, uh... His game is born and bred. They know how to grind. Well, 9-10 continuing his good form. Kaze as well will respond with his AWP, but... They have conceded some ramp control, and Kaze isn't exactly linked up with that ramp attack. He's here with Mercury, who will serve as his bodyguard. And Advent is really just ripping heads. Regress back into lobby and finds Techno trying to flank in from behind, but 910's reposition is perfect. So now this link up on the lower side, it has to be mandatory. Mazzino, one kill onto Mercury, but Kaze's that man with the package, and he didn't see that player emerge out of vent, but he'll close the door behind him, try and punch in those digits. Oh, Senzu very quick to capitalize on exactly that, but there's Oman, an incredibly fast headshot. 9-10 already on low health, so a headshot would have done it, but... Oman wasn't quite ready for him to swing out from decon. A seventh round here for the Mongols as we set ourselves up for the second half.
Second half, map one of the all-important grand final winner books their ticket to IEM Chengdu. An overdue tournament. A better late than never. And uh, the, it'd be the first IEM in China for a while, won't it? I think it was IEM Beijing. Would have been the last. So mm -hmm. exciting stuff. And for both of these teams, big domestic international tournaments. You don't want to miss out on those. Yeah, a fantastic chance to showcase Asia Counter-Strike once again versus global level teams. We still, still gotta go get through these maps first. The Mongols with that lead that they salvaged out of their CT side now trying to leverage that into their T. Getting a lot of access towards Hell, but Kaze was accounting for it. They already found an opening kill via Mercury, but Kaze finally funneled out an Advent there to sweep up at least one alongside Kaze. Advent's a little boxed in, taken down to 4 HP, but now a 2 on 4 that can play out. And the positions are a little awkward here for Tyloo to deal with. Techno creeping in towards main, and the secondary kill is fantastic. Granting access towards his upper site, but Techno still has to clear everything, and Senzu just simply cannot get that bomb to link up with him. So, bomb dropped towards Hell. Techno has to reinvestigate with 40 seconds. There's a whole lot of angles to clear, and not a whole lot of time to do it. Oh, yeah. Jam Young just playing on timing and catches Techno jumping around the corner. A sharp shot from Jam Young. And an important pistol for Tai Lu. Pistol apiece. How we like it. No plan either for the Mongols. Hmm. So they'll be echoing. Should be seven apiece, and given that Tai Lu are on the defense. Stand both ever so well. Yeah, and how long will there be a slumbering Mercury? At some point or yeah, another. Senzu as well, yeah. Yeah, you have to imagine these players start to find some semblance of form. Tyloo shouldn't have come into this game cold. They've played two best of threes already today. Maybe Mercury's all juiced out. But Advent's juiced up. I don't know what's gone into Advent, but he's he's hitting shots. He's... Oh! <laughs> I mean, look at him go! <laughs> Let's go! Get in there. This is what I'm talking about. Popping like an Advent calendar. That doesn't make sense, but... Whatever. Yeah, that's only like one day. You, I mean, like one day every day for the whole month. Listen, I buy them on... December 20th and just go for it in one go. <laughs> <laughs> just some absolute animal. A pre-Christmas treat. But sometimes you just drink a bit too much and get over exuberant on December 3rd. And then you have to go out and buy another one. That happens to the best of us. Ah. It's one of those life lessons that if you get, you know, too over eager and, and you get too invested early, it's fine. You can just buy another one. <laughs> okay. A weird lesson to learn. Tyloo bought a whole new team. So expectations are quite high for them. Maybe they did drink a little too much. Still a lot of damage being done to the Mongols at the start of this round. Blitz limping with the rest of his squad and just hoping he can re-navigate somehow. Outside seems to be a bit of a no-go. Because they're still watching with his AWP, and they have Oman on lower. Prepped and ready to take fights outside mm. from those secret steps, but they're concerned about the possibility of a player having dove down the vents. I think we're about to get a mini split, aren't we? We've got two yeah. players outside main. Are they going to execute? There's taken a lot of time here. They can't cross outer anymore. They don't really have the util. They could smoke main, I guess. They're really taking their time. Smoke over the top. Molly's going to go on secret. And here we go. Weaving their way in. Pushing in through mini. Azenio first frag found. There's a lot of defenders left. As Advent tucks himself behind the side. Kaze is doing work from up above too. So awkward as Orman 
Did he come up and through the vent? Yeah. That is fully stifled this round. He got Molotov off secret, and that was his only avenue back in. Kaze, oh, awkward. Blitz is on 14 HP, so the AWP not exactly ideal for that duel, and Blitz will call it quits. Good thing he didn't stay in heaven. That nade would have certainly done him in, but saving this AK does put the Mongols in a bit of a weird spot now. He will not have the same money as the rest of his squad, but he's more well-equipped. I thought that was going to get really awkward for Tai Lu. I mean, how many rounds have we seen so far of nuke from them, where the round is kind of determined in the opening minute? And there was just very little information for Tyloo to work off of, but they had some great positions to address it. They're getting better as they go along. Rotationally, they look good. They're being decisive and proactive. Which actually hasn't been a given during all these qualified games as we saw yesterday. Yeah. So, that's a pleasure and uh, we don't harp on it too much, but Mercury and Jamyung are not the best players on the server right now and we're still playing a very competitive game against one of the best teams, maybe the best team of their entire um, major qualification region. I'm going to put it that way. Uh-oh, timing is awful here yeah. for Jamyung. Just maybe gave just up ramp and they up. creep. Yeah, they crept out and they're going to have to... Just concede ramp entirely, all based off of that timing. That extra space that the Mongols got. They wanted to go in with some pace around that AK, have so many pistols alongside it. And Techno's already put himself front side double doors. If they break that glass, Techno may just open that door and try and catch Mercury looking the wrong direction. Here it comes, but Mercury has backup. Someone to cover off his back. And Mercury in for a double kill, but there's Blitz's AK to activate. Ullman trying to duck around the corner, and the nade does decent damage, but Mazzino, that was a critical kill. Something that could have maybe turned the tide. Blitz down to low HP, but finds his secondary kill, and a flash that goes askew, but he'll dive up those vents. No, Jam Young does not go in hot pursuit. If Blitz wanted to plant that bomb, they would have given him a little bit more leeway to do so. They wanted to play numbers, and Tyloo do not let it slip on by. This is more like it. I'm loving this, and of course we said in that previous series, and I guess throughout the qualifier, is I want to see Mongols put under pressure. I want to know what it looks like when they're playing from behind, when their spot in Chengdu actually looks in jeopardy, and granted it's Tylee's map pick, but they're spalling up. They're looking good on the CD side. We've got a round lead now, and we're going to start asking questions of Mongols of how do they adapt? How do they use their pauses in this situation? How do they find holes in this defense? when the individuals can't just cleave open rounds. This one, though, more a passive default. And a lot of pressure on Blitz, actually, to make big calls. Strategic map is Nuke, and you've got to find the gaps. He's also the point man here on towards Outer. And he's decided, maybe rightly so, the garage could be a weak point. Feels very reminiscent of old school, the Mongols. When times get tough, Blitz taking a lot of leadership, almost being a sacrificial lamb, taking a massive risk. But he crossed with Senzu into Garage, and it's all about how these players now link up with the rest of the squad positioned in at ramp. Kaze, first the person to face, and Techno dealt with. The AWP of 910 as well cannot line up the trade. Jam Young there to cover, and so 910's now left with the bomb. And unable to really set himself up in a position where both Senzu and Blitz can coordinate with him. They're so detached. Yeah. 910 had no escape path. They took lobby and they find the bomb. This is perfect. Decided. No players lost. Five alive. Team Ace. Team Ace, yeah. Advan's the best player on the server. I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Advent has almost three times the kills of Mercury. That that doesn't happen very often. Seriously, did they did they swap PCs? They just sit down and say, I'll use your config, you use mine. Cause this is crazy to see. Advent hitting some lovely shots, quick headshots, holding his spots. And this is what Tyloo looked like when Mercury's not fracking, I guess. 
What a twist. Mercury was the one holding them back the entire time. They've so few nays, the Mongols. They've just invested all of them to sell out her and nobody's bought it. Nobody's rotated. Here comes that inner hit. There's been a full contact. Orman gets one catch. Advin's doing work behind the site. Three kills for him. Granted, others might have been taking contacts, but... Advin's been amazing. Yeah, he's been sick. <laughs> this is wild. I was expecting an, a, a fragging in-game leader to grace our screens for this final. But is, is, the, is, is it the right? It's the wrong one. Two hours of deathmatch from that <laughs> consolidation final to now. That's no way to speak about the Huns. <laughs> oh my god. Right. Mongols are in trouble. This is getting out of control. The money is so good for Tyloo. You're getting absolutely slammed by Advent. Here we go again. Another inner play. This time it looks like a fake. One player goes out. It's really ramp. They do kill Jam Young. That's a rifle on the floor too. Kaze just about ekes out an angle behind that Hell Molotov. Mercury's flushed out too. And they do kill him. So it's a free on free for now. Woman's going to face from Decon. He's the sole player on this side of the map. He's got a player to contest with as well in the vent. His right hand side. The sensor could get in behind. Very awkward exchange. Oh my oh. lord. <laughs> what was that? Okay. It's a kill, I guess. Let's send you away with that one. Trade is through as this carnage is set to continue. Bomb does get planted. As one player tucks in under the catwalk, Blitz cannot move, though. He's got that bomb that's planted. Kaze on oh. the jump. Gets the spot. Advent removes the head. And a clean retake in the end. Uh, who is this? Who is this Tyloo? You know, we look at the, the day one performance coming into this qualifier. This is not the same team. They have spooled up. And they are spring-loaded to take this first map in the series. They got decimated by the Mongols in the upper bracket final. Scorelines may be a little deceptive, but the Mongols were in charge the entire way through, and with that pressure applied coming into this map, Hailu are a different beast. Advent on 23 kills. We're only entering the 20th round of play. Is that a missed event? Okay. Found it. Whew. I'm be nervous there. Five chances for Tyloo. Orman is down. Clearly is aware. Look at this. Clearly aware. But it does mean he's got to take his eyes off uh, the top of Secret and, and make it out of work. Hmm. Guess he's going to fight towards Secret. There we go. Shots exchanged. He's going to get pinched. Techno's coming in from a lower position. Orman hits the deck. 910's collected. Kaze also in the meantime. Lobby pushing response. And Mazzinia's ready for that. This round is crumbling for Tai Lu. It's a nice kill from Advent, but it won't be of any result unless Jam Young can pull off something incredible. Kind of an awkward angle to clear. Util for right and left, but now Jam Young revealing himself, not content with his spot. The doors are going to open soon enough. Senzu goes walking straight into his death. The tag from 910, great, and Techno will finish the frag. It's Advent, the man that cannot be stopped. 24 and 12 in a one on two. The in game leader that your expectation is he'd get a quarter of these frags. Half, maybe. But here he sits as a man on fire. And I don't know that the Mongols have any real read about where he's coming from. They sit inside of the site. 
Using the main silo as cover, Techno finally spotted Advent just lightning quick, decapitating Techno and 910 at the back of the bomb site. Not like this. It's Advent all day, every day. It's a missed shot from 910, and Advent's the one that finishes this map 26 12, and on top of that, a 1v2 for the first map in the series. What's just happened? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> what's happened? Advent's the best player. I, I I don't understand what's happening. Um, wow, what a map from Tyloo. And it, you know, we come in...